so this one it, uh, deals with uh, the parallax measurement, which, uh, frankly, I think for a long time, your textbook says it, you know, it's been uh, back, uh, it, it's been the backwaters of <laughs> astronomical research. But this, um, the space borne telescopes doing these measurements really uh, improve the existing state of the art by orders of magnitude. And I'm sure uh, great things will come from that, like when Gaia finishes his mission. So one, some of the things that the Hubble, Hubble, um, Hubble Space Telescope was used for was better, uh, better measuring uh, distances to the Cepheid variables to um, to better measure the rate of expansion of universe. And um, this feels like it's something that's going to have a similar impact. I, you know, either it'll uh, further tighten down uncertainties we have on the numbers we have, or if there were any mistakes, then it, the data here will show what the, mis uh, the ex any and the, where the mistakes are and the extent of the mistakes. That's the scientific process, just doing things better and better with each iteration. So this question is mainly uh, meant to show you that number scale and mostly based on the things that we've talked about. And I think it's relatively sim simple to grasp um, the, the, the distance unit of parsec. That's really the main thing that you need here that uh, for a distance at one parsec away, which is 3.26 light years, that it has our um, parallax effect of one arc second. And what you have to know, which the question says, is that the parallax effect diminishes proportionally. So for a star that is uh, 10 times farther away, the parallax effect, effect will be 10 times less. So um, with that knowledge, we can do the rest of the calculations here. And uh, you know, if I unfold a hint, the hint will basically say the same thing I'm saying out loud. So I won't open the hints, but you should open the hints and read it. So it says the be best parallaxes obtained with the Hipparchus have an accuracy of uh, milli arc second or 0 0.001 arc second. If you want to measure the distance to a star with an accuracy of 10%, its parallax must be 10 times larger than the typical error. How far away can you obtain a distance that is accurate to 10% with the Hipparchus data? Okay, it feels like the question gave us all the information. Let me just uh, write it down to, so that I'm sure. So I think the, the distance that is accurate to 10% that's going to be associated with the parallax effect of the size 0 0.01 arc second. Because um, this is my precision. And it said the effect has to be 10 times larger <laughs> than my precision or typical error. So this is the size of parallax effect we are talking about. So, um, so when something was uh, 10 parsec away, it would have parallax effect of 0 0.1. Oh, so when it has parallax effect of 0 0.01, it should, uh, this should uh, have distance of 100 parsecs away. Or if I want it to be more mathematical, I could do this on a calculator. Um, the calculation I would do is, Okay, one parsec away is 3.26 light years away. And to get the distance from the size of parallax effect, I divide by the size of the parallax effect in arc seconds, 0 0.01. That gives me uh, 326 light years, which is 100 parsec. So this distance is out to 326 light years can be obtained with a 10% precision. Yeah. Okay, that's probably right. Let me submit just to be sure. Okay, yeah. And uh, I think when I programmed in this question, I uh, gave it a quite a bit of leeway because all these are kind of estimates. So, um, so you know, if you're off by a little bit, it's fine. Now, if you're off by crazy amount, then, you know, then it's not fine. 
because <laughs> at some point it, it is wrong. But you know, something like 300 light years, that's close enough. But um, we are doing estimates here, not a precise calculation. Okay, so the next part says, uh, Gaia will have greatly improved the precision over the measurements of Hipparchus. The average uncertainty for most Gaia uh, parallaxes will be about 25 micro arc second. And just so that you can uh, connect these two numbers together, what um, 25 micro arc seconds is, is 25 and micro stands for times 10 to the power of minus, minus six arc a second. And when you work out this number, you will see this number, 0 0.4 zeros and then to five arc seconds. Um, so based on these numbers, how many times better than Hipparchus is this precision? Well, um, with the Hipparchus, I have this as the typical error, or I guess the, the smallest amount of error. And this is the typical error. And I, if you open the hint, the hint will remind you that when it comes to precision, smaller is better. So, um, so in terms of how many times is this better, what I should do is take this number and divide it by this number. That'll tell me how much more precise Gaia will be than Hipparchus. So let me take 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.4 zeros and 2.5. So 40 times. By the way, um, if you look this up, um, if you look up a feature, trying to figure out how to, uh, if this doesn't line up, is it here? Um, okay, take the lines. Okay, if you look at the feature that is uh, coded in the hint, um, you will see a number that says 200 times better. I don't frankly know where the number 200 times comes from. It might they might be doing a spot comparison, as in the comparing the most distant uh, star that Hipparchus could measure distance of, and compare that with the most distant star they expect. Gaia will be able to measure. So those distance ratios might be 200. Um, but, and as far as the numbers you have here, so you know, that's why I say based on these numbers, <laughs> Gaia will be about 40 times better. That's at least, but the number, I looked at this up on their website just to be sure that it's the correct number. So <laughs> it'll be 40 times better most of the time. Um, okay, I need to, let me just get rid of all this. Um, so given this improved precision, how far away can you obtain distances that are accurate to 10% with the expected precision of Gaia? Uh, there's a couple different ways you can get at the, the number here. I think you can do your first answer times 40. That's one. Another way you can do that is to do the same calculation we did up there, which is to, um, which is to take the, the distance that's associated with one arc second and divided by the expected parallax size for the new distance. So 3.26 divided by 0 0.4 zeros and then 25. So 130,000 light years or um, yeah, 130,000 light years. Wait, what? That's, that isn't right. So again, uh, this is the same consideration we went through when we did this calculation, which is that if uh, we want the distance to be accurate to 10% and the precision of our measuring thing is this, then the actual parallax effect that we are hoping we'll get is 10 times this, 0 0.00, so three zeros, not four, to five arc second. That's the size of parallax effect, uh, which can be measured with the 10% accuracy and the, uh, the distance will be uh, measured to 10% accuracy. So let me redo that, <laughs> 3.26 divided by 0 0.00, 0 
zero to five. So not 130,000, but 13,000 light years. So 13,000, right? Yeah, 13,000. So that should be correct. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and here again, it's uh, coded with enough um, enough of a tolerance uh, that um, if you're using slightly different numbers, it, it'll still grade that as correct. But, you know, as you saw, if you are way off, like a factor of 10 off, then you won't say it's correct. It'll be wrong. So let me go back to what it was. And, uh, and I added this explanation here, uh, mainly to, uh, well, I guess two reasons. One, to point out uh, how this number compares to the size of our galaxy. So with the 300 light years, the portion of the galaxy that we could measure distances directly to was rather small. It's only like 0.3% uh, of the diameter of the galaxy. But with the 13,000, that's 10% of the diameter. So it's getting to be a respectable size. And um, who knows in some uh, decades out, someone can come up with uh, another way to improve these measurements to cover the actual entire galaxy. But with the Gaia, when it's all done, they will um, will have mapped a much greater portion of, uh, uh, of the, the stars in our galaxy. Uh, we'll have directly mapped. And that also gives us a better control on other methods we are using, like the Cepheid variables and, um, and other uh, methods. And because this is, uh, I think they launched in 2015, and I think they are on an extended mission stage now. So I linked it to their website since um, some of the information here is bound to change as, um, as the mission itself progresses. And, you know, wraps up. Yeah, they, oh, they launched in 2013. And yeah, they, they end their nominal mission and they are on their extended mission. And I guess they are working through the data set and doing stuff. 